I'm not quite sure whether this picture will uh, will demonstrate exactly what... That's my job, isn't it, as a photographer? Of course it should demonstrate what I'm about to suggest, but I'm not quite sure whether this picture will uh, suggest just how windswept th this walk may be, but there's, uh, well, there's the telltale signs of grass laying on its side. I've given up. I'm at the top of a hill. Can't stand up anymore. Welcome to the Friday Photo Walk. We're on Coom Gibbet because it's the day before Halloween and I thought we should go somewhere with a bit of a, a grisly history. Coombe Gibbet is a gibbet at the top of Gallows Down um, near the village of Coombe and just within the civil parish of Coombe in Berkshire, formerly Hampshire. What is a gibbet, Neil? I'll tell you. To be perfectly honest, it's horrible. Uh, gibbeting was uh, a common law punishment which a, a judge could impose in addition to execution. This practice was regularised in England by the Murder Act of 1751. And uh, judges could impose gibbeting for murder. It was uh, most often used for, um, for traitors, and murderers, highwaymen, pirates and sheep stealers. There's a lot of sheep around here. And it was intended to discourage others from committing similar offences. It is a bit odd, though, isn't it, when you, when you put sheep stealers next to uh, traitors, murderers, highwaymen and pirates. Traitors, murderers, highwaymen, pirates, sheep stealers. The structures, and I'm going to take a, a picture of uh, the gibbet in a moment's time, were, were therefore often placed next to public highways, uh, crossroads and waterways. In essence, you'd be executed. Your body would then be uh, exhibited from one of these high gibbets, um, and, uh, yeah, that was, um, that was your punishment. These days, of course, we, we usually welcome people to villages and towns with nice sort of welcome to, insert name of village or town, as you drive in. Those days, 260, 270 years ago, you got this instead. I mean, honestly, would you want to go in? Come on, darling. We're not shopping here. Can't risk the parking fines. God knows what they'll do. Photography Daily, the Friday photo walk. Words of the wise then, make sure you leave with exactly the same amount of sheep as you arrive with, i.e. none. This week's photo walk sees us on another windswept one, this time to a gibbet, which as photo walk Neil said a moment ago, is a punishment upon the ultimate punishment, where your body was displayed aloft this high T-bar, two at a time, just for company so that anybody so much as thinking about a life of crime may think, you know what, I'll go get myself a good trade like carpentry or farmhand. Much safer in the long run. And for those joining us on your, uh, your maiden photo walk, what exactly is it? Well, it's a, a walk, yes, taking photos and reading mails that you sent into the mailbag or some DMs that I managed to spy from Twitter and so on. So it's our end-of-the-week opportunity to spend some time together walking and making pictures with whatever camera takes your fancy. Announcement to come today, something I need your help with. But first, thank you to mpb.com, who this month have been helping bring a little more attention to the show. If you are thinking about buying, selling or trading used camera kit and you live in America or Europe, it is the best and safest way to operate. Warranties on gear, instant payouts when values are agreed, what's not to like? Also, thank you to Lower Boots, who for the last couple of months have supported the Friday Photo Walks and given us some pairs of boots, the brilliant Renegades, to give away. One more pair, which will be announced later in the show, just for having written into this programme over the last month. But don't stop writing in. Your emails and messages are what keep this photo walk from falling silent and there being half an hour of ASMR-style footsteps, heavy breathing, and in the case of today, distant sheep. Unless, of course, you like ASMR-style footsteps, heavy breathing and distant sheep. In which case, well, you know what not to do. Right, here comes the first email of the week. Well, I'm up the top of the hill. What I'm trying to get is if I can position myself where I can get a sheep and the gibbet in, which would seem uh, appropriate enough, seeing that if we stole one of you fine fine chaps and chapesses, then uh, we'd have uh, would have been hanging from this, wouldn't we? See if I can get that. It's a really sort of... I mean, the clouds are a, a little bit bland, but there's a few breaks in here, a few breaks here and there, which make the picture a bit more interesting. F11, one, two, fifth, let's have a go. I'll tell you what, we knew how to 
mete out punishment in our, in our dark history. Well, the swallows that are, are dancing above me and enjoying the breeze here, and the, uh, the sheep just, uh, <laughs> you're okay? You're watching me, are you? What are you doing? What are you speaking into that thing for? You humans are very strange. Um, the, uh, yeah, the beautiful sounds of this countryside are rather ruined by a farm in the background that are doing some heavy industrial work. Shush, have some lunch. Welcome to the Friday Photo Walk, and we're going to start with one from uh, our good friend, Richard Heinrich. You gave me a proper scare when I first read your mail, actually, Richard, sorting out the Photo Walk shows, and I realised your mail wasn't necessarily from you. Anyway, I'm, I'm going to read on, otherwise I'm going to do a dreadful spoiler. Here's the mail. Well, Neil, it's time for my yearly checkup. With a pre-existing condition, I hope for the best and prepare for the worst. This time they're going to have to open up my body to understand the severity of my symptoms. My vision is suffering and energy wanes. How did I get to this moment in time? Was this condition caused by the environment or my lifestyle? The physical environment has taken its toll on my body. Hot desert sun, blowing sand, salt water spray, waterfall mist, freezing mornings, snow and the rain has scarred my body both internally and externally. My lifestyle has pushed the boundary of my strength, energy and endurance during the past year. Did I push the envelope too far? Was the risk worth the reward? Did crossing the line between reasonable safety and extreme danger return the results envisioned? The circuitry of my body is compromised and has become susceptible to infection and decay. My diagnosis doesn't sound that great, does it? The corrosion to my system will continue to spread until total failure. But I'll not stop taking pictures and capturing life until my XT2 main power board dies. Thanks. From 84A53. I've silenced out part of that because that's a, that's a very personal serial number. And no good respecting camera would want somebody to reveal their serial number, would they now? So, yeah, it was, of course, um, from your good friend, the camera, Richard. I took a sigh of relief. I thought, well, obviously, I, I don't feel good for the camera, but uh, I'm glad you're OK. Uh, it's worthy of inclusion, I think, in the Friends section of the website. If you've never been to the Friends section, do go take a visit. I'll put, uh, I'll put Richard's camera's words there for you so you can, you can read them. There's some new articles up there as well, and they're basically a compilation of... Uh, of emails, missives, stories, some pictures that listeners have sent into the show that I thought didn't just deserve one outing on a Friday photo walk, but deserve to be uh, to be published. So you'll find them there. Go to photographydaily.show and then just look for the, the Friends tab. Thanks for the updated pics too, by the way, Richard, from the, uh, the service following the water damage. I assume that's what you're talking about with uh, our little Fujifilm X-T2 here. Good to hear from you both. Now, if I were a forager, I'd probably be looking at these mushrooms thinking, it's either a really tasty bit of lunch, let's get a picture, or I'd be saying, don't go anywhere near that if you don't fancy a few problems for the next couple of weeks. I think I'll go nowhere near it. I'm going to get a lot of windswept tree pictures today, trees at, at jaunty angles, not because I'm, uh, I'm Dutch tilting, tilting the Dutch, but because, of course, they're sat on the side of this, uh, this hillside in view of that dreadful gibbet that I just can't get my eyes off. Let's get this one. This, uh, this has seen a fair bit of... Uh, fair, fair few gusts, fair bit of wind. I must admit, I'm, I'm drawing a lot of sheep around me as well. <laughs> I think word's got around today. Oi, there's this bloke taking lots of pictures. Come on, Mavis, get your slap on. We could be appearing in Countryside Weekly magazine, I don't know. Let's get one of this tree. So, this is quite a long mail, bear with me. Make yourself a cuppa. It's from Julio de Burr. I think it's de Burr, or is it Julio? You will need to correct me. These are the things I don't like to get wrong. So yeah, it's a longish email, but uh, I love it, and I'm sure somebody else will have something to say on, on this particular subject. Dear friend, I'm a, uh, a Brazilian architect living in the northeastern city of Recife. I think I've heard of Recife. And I think I've got the pronunciation of that correct, because uh, in Lanzarote, it's Arrecife. And we've just missed a couple of letters off here. 
That must be right. It's a collection of roughly four million souls you probably never heard about. Well, I think I have, Julio. I think I have. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure I have. Pardon the audacity of a, a humble amateur photographer itching to offer its take on the so-called state of gear that we live in nowadays. No, not at all. I tell you what, I'm, I mean, I, I don't know. Um, we got some news, very important, exciting news coming up. Well, I think it's exciting in the show as to... Uh, as to something that you're going to help me with. So uh, it'll be interesting to know how many professionals and how many amateurs actually listen to the show, what the, what the breakdown is. I'm not sure we'd ever properly scientifically be able to find out. But, uh, yeah, no, just look, if you, take a, if you make a picture, even if it's on your iPhone, you are extremely welcome <laughs> to this podcast. You know that from uh, somebody that uh, emailed in last week that has n- no interest at all in taking pictures but uh, has picked up the podcast and quite enjoys it. Um, Anyway, I got enticed by listening about your new sponsor, the seemingly good folks of MPB. Uh, By virtue of being in Brazil, I've no way of having first-hand experience with them, insert sad emoji here, with a currency exchange ratio aggressively tilted against my wallet. Uh, For the most part, we have to make do with older tech, ancient even, if you go by the velocity in which the camera makers spit their brand new products out. That's true. Uh, It's somewhat funny listening to the the influencers going on about casting doubt about the future of this or that brand and the the squeals of their users disputing. I think squeals is a very good expression. If you um, (laughs) ever make a YouTube film about one particular brand, um, expect vitriol and and (laughs) honestly such nasty comments sometimes because you decide to talk about, I don't know, Canon or Sony or Nikon, Nikon, Nikon above their Panasonic or Lumix or, or Leica. You know, it's, it's, um, it's a very personal thing to some people. Um, anyway, I digress. Uh, Julia goes on to say, for me, what's happening is simply that we've uh, way too many cameras already in capital letters. Albeit I'm not a pro, Um, I, nor anybody of my immediate circle, really feel the need to upgrade virtually any of our gear. If you pour yourself a good shot of... Is is that Kachaka? Is it Kachaka? Kachaka? You're going to say, Neil, surely you know what that drink is. Kachaka? Kachaka. It's booze, isn't it? And really think about what's on offer. It's really pathetic to justify spending all kinds of crazy money just to have a burst rate of uh, now 20 shots per second in lieu of the awful 18 that you currently have. You're right there, Julio. I mean, I remember having a six frames per second camera thinking, wow, this is like Formula One. (laughs) And now you can have a gazillion. Well, not quite. And they go on about infinitesimal gains in refresh rates of EVFs that you know, out phone screen tired eyes could not even discern, even even to save our lives. And then there's the, the extra half stop of image stabilization. My God, the absolutely crucial second SD card or the cats and dogs eye focus that one simply can't live without. I will say, though, in defence of those that uh, do bang on or bash on about having having, uh, twin cards in a machine, I I see for the pros why, uh, and I count myself in here, I've done a lot of professional work of late, thank you, Uncle Covid, Um, but, uh, yeah, the twin card, it does make you feel safe at times. Uh, I've had cards fail on me in the past, and I dare say I will in the in the future. And unless you, you know, make pictures and constantly card swap. I mean, that was the way we used to get around it, remember? Just used to card swap. Have a, a, a pocket full of cards, swap, 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 all the way along. But of course, if you lose your cards. Anyway, that's another story. Anyway, and then, Neil, there's the onboard IR, 3D panorama and macro stitches, the capacity of shooting 8K, even though your audience will only ever check your latest masterpiece on a broken screen Motorola cell from 2010, 9 out of 10 times. (laughs) You thought about this, haven't you, Julia? There's simply nothing that could, in my judgment, justify this crazy rat race of gear lust. I still use cameras that go back 10 years or more, still working at 100% and delivering all that my imagination asks of them. And uh, I'm talking about a multitude of brands, not just my beloved Fujis. Oh, you're a Fuji user. Ah. Uh, I don't know why I'm saying it like that. (laughs) It doesn't mean anything. You could have said, I'm a Minolta user. I'd have still said, oh, you're a Minolta user. Ah. 
Every one of them are just fine, leafing my photo books of Bresson, Cadelka, Leiter, Haas, prowling the streets with one manual camera, one lens, without any of these accoutrements, and still delivering images that uh, prevent me from ever complaining what I have at hand. It's ridiculous listening to the moaning of people complaining about infinitesimal lacks of performance and dynamic range when you have Kappa's D-Day pictures in front of you. Yes. Sometimes I think the limitations economics cast upon us are in fact a blessing. It makes you work harder, adapt, evolve yourself. And then there's the cell phones argument. I mean, cell phones will never substitute cameras, as they say. The ergonomics remain incompatible. I don't know of any photographer who'll quit their gear in favour of any phone, no matter how many Gs they will carry on their badge. If one decides to use just a phone, they probably won't buy a camera anyway. But regardless of it, camera sales will continue to fall. There are mountains of perfectly good and extremely capable used gear out there. Goodness, you're writing a commercial for me here. One has to be uh, delusional not to take advantage of it. Anyway, I'm a dedicated listener of both your podcasts and would like to congratulate you on the effort of veering off the mere gear talk in favour of the practical and many times philosophical themes surrounding photography that we can all benefit from. I'm listening in the... Oh, this is great. I'm listening in the jungles, roaming in one of our miles of sunny beaches here in Brazil. I can't be more than four or five days away from us having a brew. You're probably not. It wouldn't take you four or five days to fly here. Well, it might do these days. <laughs> You might, you might have to swim. There's no planes. Swim, boy. Just in case curiosity pops up, I can be found in Instagram under the time stand still. The time stand still. Just knock on the door and I'll answer. I thought that was a strange thing to say, then I realised exactly why you say that, because, of course, it's a private account. And, uh, yeah, so that makes sense. But I'm, I'm sure there might be some listeners that would like to make friends with you. Pardon for the broken English. And keep fighting the good fight, says Julio de Boer. What a super insight into your feelings about used gear. Um, do you know what? I'm purposefully not going to add to that one because I, I think you've said far more eloquently than I what might have, uh, well, I might have incoherently babbled somehow uh, exactly what you've just said. So uh, thank you for taking uh, a good amount of time to send that in. Uh, warm the cockles of my heart. There's a good English phrase for you. Warm the cockles of my heart. Now go look that one up. I'm going to go and find myself another sheep or tree to, to photograph. As long as you're not stealing them, remember the gibbet at all times, Neil. Prize draw to come for the lower boots and a shout-out as this arrived far too late for the walking recording to Chris Parfit, who right now is probably falling off his fishing stool or whatever it is that you sit on when you're fishing. Celebrating his 36th today, your wife, Chris, wrote in because apparently this episode is your favourite of the week and at some stage today... You're likely to be on a riverbank in Gloucestershire, England, fishing and listening. And this being the first birthday mention we've ever made on the show, I'm doing a picture swap with you. I've sent you one of my pictures in the post. Now you need to send one of your amazing seascapes that are your passion, apparently. Fair swap, I'd say. And I hope you enjoy your birthday surprise tonight, which, of course, I can't tell you anything about. Just don't be back late. See? Birthdays and domestics, all in one message. It's like being back on the radio again. Back to your questions. And there's no way we're going to keep to the 30 minutes again, is there? I told you I was hopeless on these editions. Ooh, that's ghastly. Even more grisly than the gibbet. Someone's had a, a go at a poor rabbit here. There's only the head. Sorry, kids, if you're listening. I'm sure it's not real. Um, Friday photo walk. For the last time with lower boots. Thank you for Loa's support and, uh, of course, thank you for the boots that they've uh, given us the opportunity to give away. We have one more pair to give away and because I, I can't do a proper draw perched atop a hill, I'm going to have to do that one in the safety of the, uh, the studio. Studio Neil will weave that seamlessly into the show a little bit later on. But uh, sincerely, my thanks. It's been great having you, having you along and I've thoroughly enjoyed the, the boots. No, no, present tense. I'm thoroughly enjoying the boots. There we go. Still wearing them. They should have been taking photo walks in France a couple of weeks ago and various other countries this year. But uh, yes, as we said, Uncle Covid put, uh, put pay to that one for the moment. It will return. Uh, right, one from Graham Gardner, which I thought, hang on. Not the cult 70s TV genius from TV show The Goodies. But no. Hi, Neil. Graham Gardner here. Gardner, not garden. And no, before you think that's the cult 70s genius from the TV show The Goodies, see, 
you read my mind. Now I'm the part-time photographer, full-time mechanical engineer from Ipswich. Though I, I did grow up in the 70s, I think like you. Happy belated birthday, by the way. Yeah, thank you very much, that's kind of you. And uh, I properly suffered, says Graham, at school for having this name. I was just known as Goody Graham. No lasting damage, fortunately. Actually, I did a, I did a wedding for, uh, talking of comedian name, comedian's names, I did a, a wedding for uh, Victoria Wood. Not the Victoria Wood, who is uh, a, uh, a much-loved late British comic. Genius, she was a genius. But uh, Victoria, I remember Victoria saying, far from suffering from, uh, from her friends uh, taking the rise out of having the same name as a popular comic in the time she grew up, uh, she pretty much in school terms dined out on it. Still one of my favourite comedians. Ah, oh, and probably why last week I referred to being whipped by a damp copy of Like a Lover's Monthly. <laughs> what did she used to say in that song? Oh, what was the song? Hit me on the bottom with a woman's weekly or something. One of the rhymes in that song. Very funny. Anyway, turning some tables in this mail after listening to your shows now for just over two months. Here's some questions for you that you ask of others. I'm just intrigued to know your answers. Are we allowed to do that? I'm the one that usually asks the questions. Well, I know on a Friday you ask some questions, but generally it doesn't turn into an interview. <laughs> really, does it? OK, all right. Why did you become a photographer? What motivated you? See, that's, uh, now that's usually my stage one question. If I don't know anybody at all and there's a bit of a gap in their bio, that's a good one to go in with. Well, I mean, I, I worked in radio. That was my, that was my original job. I was, uh, I was a presenter. Not a DJ, broadcaster, love. Presenter at, uh, at various radio stations. A job which I absolutely loved. But um, then, you see, Graham, I ended up as a, as a programme director, which, uh, when really I was, you know, I was still a broadcaster at heart. Um, a little bit like a photo editor who misses the, the daily picture making and the the excitement of getting out there and chasing a story. Um, yeah, I, I, um, I was going in each day and I was in charge of, at one stage, at one particular channel that I worked at, dozens, I think about, you know, about 20, maybe up to 30 freelancers. So I was their boss. And being somebody who, <laughs> who, who sort of bent the rules, I would say, when I was a broadcaster, it was, uh, it was odd actually being the one who had to draw people to one side and say, come on. Here's the rule book. This is what we should really be doing. So, yeah, that, that felt strange for a start. And then, uh, then really at that time, I had a boss who saw my pictures business on the, on the side growing. I don't think it was growing rapidly. I mean, it was something... I mean, I was the classic weekend warrior, which is why you'll never hear me uh, bemoaning the, the weekend warrior uh, collective, you know, the ones that do it at the weekend for a bit of cash on the side. I, I, I mean, I was there. I was, uh, that was me essentially he offered me an ultimatum it was his company or my photography and I remember the day that that I was asked I, I looked at him square in the eyes and um I said um I think I'll take the photography thank you very much do you take any pictures away from your work you know what up to this moment no not really I mean during uh I didn't take any during lockdown which I, I kind of regret I felt it was ground well covered by other people but of course what I didn't appreciate was that our ground wasn't being well covered by other people because they were locked in their own worlds and we were locked in ours. And so these photo walks actually have become, uh, they've become a, a blessed release really uh, for, for my own creativity. I appreciate the pictures that I'm returning from these Friday photo walks. <laughs> Probably, you know, if a landscape photographer looked at them, they'd say, what's that, Neil? That's a snap. That's not a landscape picture. And I will go and do some industrial ones, as was uh, suggested a couple of weeks ago as well. And just one more thing, as, as uh, you love Columbo. Yeah, it's one of my favourite phrases, that, isn't it? Just one more thing. As he wanders back in to try and solve the, the... Well, he knew who did it from the start, didn't he, really? Another question you often ask right at the end of a chat. Will you ever stop doing what you love? Blimey. These aren't exactly deep, but these are probing. Graham, would I ever stop doing what I love? Um, I don't really think I've... Have I given it a lot of thought? I'm sure I don't... I wouldn't phrase it quite like that when I'm asking. <laughs> Do I phrase it like that when I'm asking people? I mean, photography-wise, well, government bounce-back loan scheme means I'm going to be working for another 100 years. <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, I did say I'd do 1,000 weddings, and then that would be it, and I'd uh, really go back into commercial work and portraits and branding portraits and 
CEOs and all those sort of fascinating people that probably, you know, as I've become more mature in my years, make more sense for me to be spending time with. I, but I, I don't know. I mean, I've done 900 weddings. Will I stop at 1,000? Not far to go there to 1,000. I don't know. I could end up doing lots of comebacks, couldn't I? Comeback tours like Tina Turner. Obviously, I don't look as good in fishnets. Um, but podcast... Uh, well, as the Carpenters said, another 70s reference, we've only just begun. I mean, I, we, we gave it a finite amount of time. I do, have some, uh, I do have some news in a moment. I said we had some news. Stand by, everybody. We're standing by, Neil. Don't leave it too long. This has been a long question. I've, the, I've got to take the kids to school, I'll take out the laundry, change the oil, insert reason for getting to the point here. I mean, in our minds, that's me and Mrs. Podcast. Should we move on a bit? We've been stood here for ages. Let's go further up the trail here. Uh, we said... Uh, Lockdown is, is going to affect our photography business till mid-2021. There's no doubt about that. So if ever there were a time to, to launch this thing and go consistent for a while and turn up to, uh, to work every single day, it would be now, wouldn't it? Because had, had the pandemic not happened, w- would we be doing... Would I be doing a podcast every day? No, probably not. No, almost definitely not. And I remember when I was photographing, thinking doing one a week was was pretty hard going but um having two different titles on the on the roll and one of those being a a daily one i mean i've, I've got into i have found a pattern i found a form i found a way to do it um which i i obviously didn't know about before but uh yeah i mean we we said uh, we'd like to do something that doesn't uh, replace photography but does become a, a main part of the way we live spiritually and financially and i know that all sounds a bit oh neil spiritually but yeah I'm, I, I believe that so um yeah yeah that's what the subscriptions are about really i mean if we we find ourselves really doing this at a hobby at some time in the not too distant future then uh, quite honestly i'll go back to to it being a weekly thing which which probably will be an addition and a, an extra one for subscribers um, I mean, I, you know, the difficult thing about subscriptions, and you've heard me talk about the subscriptions on the show, I know. And uh, sometimes, sometimes I think, am I talking about them too much? But then I think, no, be more American. You know what it's like, don't you, Americans? You'd say, no, Neil, you've got to ask, for heaven's sake. Business is business. So I've been trying to think about it in a slightly different way, really. Um, I mean, do you remember Jack, Jack Lowe from the Lifeboat Station Project? He was a, a guest and he, um, he has spent almost eight years now photographing every single lifeboat station in, uh, in Britain and in Ireland. And, it, and it's been his job. And the only way he can do that is by the subscribers and the supporters that have helped him along the way. And I don't know whether you remember what he said, but there was part of the interview where we was talking about um, the, the, that particular way that he supports himself as a, as a creative, as a, as a photographer. And he said, well, look, Neil, what you need to remember is just because it's free to enjoy, or in my case, just because it's free to listen to, doesn't mean that it's free to make. And, uh, yeah, whilst nobody asked you to do it, at some stage you'll create something that, uh, that has value beyond its original intent to somebody. And that, that could be... I mean, the case of a podcast, that could be that it's a friendly voice or educational or personal reasons, maybe even mentally for somebody. There's a myriad of reasons why people, and I always used to say this to the broadcasters that I was a boss for, there's a myriad of reasons that people listen to to the radio. I mean, they do it for company, they do it because they might like the music on your station, they may do it because they, they buy into you, they like you, they're invested in you as a person, the way you speak to them makes some sort of difference to their lives. There's a myriad of reasons. Um, and the last bit, I think this has been the longest photo walk link ever. Graham, you've made a record here, um, is to just tell you about the listener survey. So I've been thinking long and hard about doing a listener survey, and since I've shared my feelings about, uh, very honestly, because you've always had an honest Neil, haven't you? If you've ever asked a question, you've expected an honest answer from me, and I've always expected honest answers from those that I interview. So I'm going to do a listener survey. So in the plans, you were supposed to say, I'm going to do a listener survey and then over to you, Studio Neil, to tell you all about it. If you had a start to the plans, that would have sounded seamless. As it is, I'm chastising you when I know how much you loathe being nagged. But take this as a nag. Over to you, Studio Neil, to tell you all about it. OK, thank you, Photo Walk Neil. So the first listener survey is launched. If you listen on any of the popular podcast apps, 
you're going to need to go to photographydaily.show. All the W's, photographydaily, or one word, dot show, the website to take part in this. Look for the menu item survey, and there you'll find some questions about the show. Stuff like how many times a week do you listen? Are there too many? What do you like? What kind of thing? And because I like to make things simple, it's all done by check boxes. So it won't be like one of those really annoying surveys you get from telecoms companies that ask you so many questions you start to lose the will to survive after five hours. It's important because we're going to use this to take creative direction from you, the early adopters on how you'd like this show to move ahead. So it's like a referendum, though not like one of those binary ones where you get a one-choice answer then spend years arguing with your nearest and dearest about which way you voted. Everyone who joins in will be entered into a draw for a £50 Amazon voucher or, of course, whatever that value is wherever you are in the world. Just a little something to say thank you for taking a few moments out to become our chief respondent. Boots to announce soon. We've got those to give away. Back to your questions. Friday photo walk with lower boots. I have no idea why I do that in song. Um, big thank you to a few folks who have sent stuff in. First of all, Neil McCaffrey, who le- heard me talking about the, the big American muscle locos on the show because uh, my youngest, Thomas, loves trains. So he sent me a picture of the General Electric AC44. Excuse me. Big spider's just come onto my, my script here. Whoa. Hey, go on, just drop to the floor. There you go. See? Hey, look at me. Um, spider lover. AC, oh, <laughs> not quite so sure. I'd have been quite as calm in Australia. Uh, General Electric AC44 CW CTE. 4400 horsepower of pure muscle. Thank you, Neil. It's on his Instagram. You're an absolute star. James Souls, who's a regular contributor of my other show with Kevin Mullins, the Fuji cast. Remember, we were talking about the, the uh, Nikon, Nikon, Nikon F5 couple of weeks back as being a superb film SLR camera when somebody had written in to ask about a film body. Do you remember that? Anyway, hi, says James. When I chose to quit my old job, heading operations for a holiday firm and try to go full-time as a photographer, I mean, that's frying pan into the, into the fire, isn't it? Travel and tourism into photography. Um, I uh, chose to get my uh, backup plan in the form of a taxi license. Thank God I did due to COVID. It's currently what feeds my family. Well, good for you, actually. I need different things to do, yeah. Um, There's another blessing, and that's the long-distance jobs I've done this week. They've given me the opportunity to catch up on the podcast, being on the M25 with various roadworks for hours on end. Ah, the car park of England, James. Yes. Uh, There is an actual point to my email. As uh, I say, I've been a little bit behind. I just listened to episode 110, and there was an email from Adam who mentioned they're looking for a film camera and that the uh, Nikon F5 was too heavy. I thought the same not so long ago, and I bought myself the Nikon F100. It's like a junior F5, it is. Uh, It's a really great film camera. Might be worth Adam considering. Kindness from James. Well, there we go. There's an idea. And uh, and a short one from uh, Craig W. Hey, Neil, just a quick question. I was listening to the other show you do about Alcatraz and ghosts. Have you ever taken a photo and looked at it and thought, what the hell is that? There's some strange stuff that's being caught on camera. Love the show, thank you, Craig. Um, no, I haven't really, to be honest. I mean, there's a, you know, a load of stuff around from people who claim shadows to be something else. And there was a recent Area 51 about a landing spacecraft. Did you see that one? About 40 metres long or something? I mean, generally, though, they're always explainable, aren't they? Um, I mean, it's, I think it's this thing that, that we have as people, isn't it? We've got to believe that there's some... I mean, I'm standing next to a cornfield now. <laughs> And my mind is racing a little bit because I've watched too many films where stuff comes out of cornfields. I'm rather on my own here. It's just giving me the collie wobbles. It's a good old quaint English phrase. But no, I mean, uh, no, I've, I've not really. Let me, I mean, I tell you what, let me take a picture of this. If you see something, let me know, won't you? I'll probably know before you get this podcast, of course. Hold on. There's lovely cloud structure behind it. That's going to make a really nice photo. Might get out of here though. <laughs> After my, imagines, my imagination started playing up, Halloween on the way and all that. The Friday photo walk. 
This uh, last couple of months, of course, we've been supported by Lower Boots, the best boots in the business for climbing and hiking and Friday photo walking. And of course, you've had a chance to win some boots just by writing into the show with your feedback and any questions that you have about photography. And of course, just telling us what you've been up to as well. We'd like everybody to win these boots, but not everybody can. But don't fear, because you never know when there may be this opportunity again. Nudge, nudge, hint, hint. So we're going to do the prize draw. I brought in Thomas to do the the prize draw again. uh, I've got a a piece of paper, Thomas. Hi. Hi. (laughs) All the names are on this piece of paper, okay? Okay. They're all in a long line. Close your eyes. Right. In fact, no, you need actually you need to open them to start with. Why? I'm going to put the piece of paper in front of you because you're going to put your pencil bang on the piece of paper. But you're going to do that when your eyes are closed. Okay, here's the piece of paper. Okay. All the names are on there. Right, close your eyes, close your eyes. Yep. Pencil down. Who's under that? Lynn Fraser. Let me have a look. Lynn, Lynn, Lynn Fraser. Well done, congratulations. Round of applause. See, no canned clapping here. Uh, Well done then, we'll get uh, you two together, well I mean you Lynn and Lower, (laughs) we'll get you together, talking together and you can organise the the boots to come your way. And I do expect to see, um, of course, a picture of you striding out across one of your photo walks proudly sporting these boots. Shall we go for the last mail of the day? Oh, go on then. Right, last one of the week, the sun's coming out. Oh, there was me saying earlier, look at these clouds, how quickly things can change. Might try and get some nice contrasty pics before this photo walk is over. Uh, This one's from Douglas Dean. You mentioned in a previous podcast that you had reservations about people who who tented in the States and Canadian national parks. Worried worried about bears, I think you said. Yes, I I was. In fact, we, we titled the show, didn't we? Spotted by a bear. Bit clickbaity. Did well, though. My experience is camping in Jasper and Banff National Parks in Alberta, Canada. You really don't have to worry about bears in marked campgrounds. The park wardens, they uh, keep a track of the bears in the vicinity and will trap and move them on if they become a nuisance far away. What about those, uh, what about those YouTube films, though? Douglas? Where well, you see bears just wandering into areas where there are swimming pools. Hello, there seems to be a grizzly drinking from my pool. The hard, fast rule is uh, never bring any food inside your tent. Bears that uh, do cause trouble are there for the food, not you. Any run-ins you have with a bear is because you're between them and food, or worse, you're between them and their young. Keep your food locked in the trunk of your car, boots in brackets, I know what a trunk is, Uh, or hang it by a rope way up high in a tree. All outfitters now sell bear spray, which is an oversized can of mace. You sort of know. I'll look for that next time I'm in Tesco. I uh, once took a photography workshop in Jasper National Park and we were housed in a dormitory that was used by Parks Canada Wardens. One of the stories we were told is about a helicopter just taking off from the ground where bear spray accidentally got released inside the craft. My word, the pilot landed safely but the new rule was to store any bear spray in the outside storage compartment of the helicopter. I should think so after that. Imagine that. Another story from the same workshop. We were there during rutting season and we came across a female moose way out in a field. We stopped the car, got out our cameras. My roommate told us he can do a pretty good moose call (laughs) and proceeded to demonstrate it. All of a sudden, there was a rustling in the trees across the road from us and an angry moose with huge antlers charged out of the bush, ready to take on the challenger for his mate. And he found uh, us mere humans. See, now that is a photo walk with attitude, isn't it? I mean, what, what could I do here? I could do a pheasant call. I doubt that I'm going to be a charged by, by, charge by a pheasant, though. Confused, the moose just stopped, maybe about 10 metres from us, snorted, stamped the ground, and the funny part, there was a busload of tourists coming the opposite direction. Driver stopped when he saw there was a moose in his way. We could see in the front windshield of the bus people with cameras begging to be let out. The driver very adamantly saying no. Uh, we photographers quietly and quickly got back in our car and drove away. There's nothing to see here. Move on. Like your podcasts, I've just subscribed to the member area. Oh, thank you, Doug. Keep the informative and entertaining programming coming our way. I will. I know that wasn't so much about photography, uh, <laughs> that one. But uh, appreciate your mail and uh, the funny moose story. Right, sun's out. Let's go get some contrast. Contrast! It may be the last of the year. 
Then the winter sets in. Oh, it's not the still see the sun it's not that bad in the uk i know some people just think it rains all the time and that is it for this week's photo walk all being well next week's location should be slightly more distant but i don't want to tempt fate in case our government imposes lockdowns upon more lockdowns upon tier systems or new bubbles that mean you can only meet in public with somebody who starts with the letter z and has a birthday on the 35th of may keep the faith we will get through this everyone and we will beat it Tomorrow, if you're a member of the show, which you can be by going to the website and hitting up the Members tab, you'll get access to our first ever Megasode. Two main guests tomorrow, Chris Porsche, talking about his incredible book project that he shot on his doorstep in a modestly sized city called Peterborough. Well, not quite on his doorstep, but the streets around, where he's met up with people again who he photographed 30 years ago to make their portraits now. It's a real detective story, this one, particularly as these photographs were all made as he walked Peterborough. It's a fantastic project, and he has a lot of advice on making personal projects. Then American photographer and visual artist Josh Rossi is here as the workshop guest to talk about business, compositing, and how to network from the off. There is the haunted studio story, my haunted studio no less, some cutting room floor excerpts from interviews recorded where... Stuff that escaped the interviews you heard were just too good not to play to your ears only, of course. And we start a a new book feature. Giles Penfound, former head of press photography in the British Army, has picked out a book that's just the best place to start. Written by Henri Cartier-Bresson. Seems a good place to begin, doesn't it? And there's even another photo walk with a special guest, landscape photographer Chris Upton. It's a big episode. And that's why we called it The Megasode. And it's for your ears only if you are a member. On Monday, we're back with Denise Maxwell, who refused to bow down to COVID back in March when her photography diary was practically ripped up. And then we have a very special guest on Tuesday. It's a story of a father, a mother and one very brave daughter. The father is a distinguished Reuters international photojournalist, Darren zamet Lupi. He's covered the most incredible stories in his career, but nothing like this. The story of Rebecca, or Bex, his 15-year-old daughter. He talks about his intimate photo project, chronicling her fight against cancer. It's the most incredibly potent story, and it starts on Tuesday. We do say stories of life told by photographers, and that's not one to be missed. Have a good weekend. Music in the show was from artlist.io and I look forward to photographing with you, hearing from you and talking with you in the Megasode tomorrow. Photography Daily is a Loading Zone production.